Welcome to The Wedding Edit, our wedding planning podcast for the modern couple. We are your hosts, Kelly and Dana. Today, we're here to talk about all things wedding planning with Emma, the founder of Sparrow Weddings, um, an event planning, management and styling business here in Adelaide. So welcome, Emma. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks You're for welcome. being here. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna Thanks start I'm gonna start by um I found a quote in my um dictionary called Instagram <laughs> um <laughs> about what an event planner is. Noun. And I just wanna know if you think this is accurate. Okay. So someone who does precision guesswork based on unreliable data provided by those of questionable knowledge. See also wizard. Or magician. <laughs> Do you think that's accurate? Or yes, although I like to be referred to as high priestess. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I reckon that's pretty accurate. I although, do too. Magician, wizard. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't like the the inference that our clients have little knowledge. <laughs> Questionable knowledge. <laughs> I guess that's. Well, why I they mean, how many us. weddings have they planned? Really? Yeah, hopefully, just one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, to kick off, can you tell us about how you decided to become a wedding planner and how long you've been in the industry for? Okay. So Sparrow opened, look, I registered the name in 2015, but I didn't do a job till 2016. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, I like to take my time to consider things. I was a travel agent for a really long time and, um, yeah, I guess the industry had changed a lot since I started in it and I wasn't that happy anymore and I needed something new. I always loved weddings. I was never that person who got an invitation in the mail and went, oh, my God, another wedding. I was like, yes, <laughs> what will I wear? And there's going to be great food and all my friends will be there and it will be amazing. Um, and I figured out the things I still liked about being a travel agent was um, the relationships with my clients and also putting all those little jigsaw pieces together to make it all fit into a cohesive plan. So, Emma, what are your favourite things um, about being a wedding planner? I love I love those relationships with, with the really good clients, you know, like you, you spend a lot of time with them and you get to know them and um, be their support person on the day a lot of times. And it's really sad when we have to break up. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, although we don't always. There's a few that I still stay in touch with and we have drinks and catch up. And oh, it's that's really nice. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. <laughs> what about the ones you don't? <laughs> I love them all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Emma, one of the questions that we probably both get asked a lot, um, which is an important one, what would you say is the key difference between a stylist and a planner? Okay, so a planner is focused on the logistical details and the um, the timelines and the budget plans and, and how things fit together on the day and making sure everything is organised in a way that makes sense and doesn't leave anything behind and styling is about the design and the look and um, that cohesive feel that you get when you walk into a room and everything goes together so flowers decor invitations yeah. that give you that first hint about what the day is going to be like yeah cake all the visual things. elements yeah absolutely. is how I kind of explain the styling yeah yeah and it can be hard to keep them separate sometimes they overlap but they do a little bit there's definitely they? a difference so for someone that doesn't know, like myself, <laughs> who uh, – well, it, it might be like for me, I don't really know if – is it the couple that reaches out to vendors to book or is it the planner or is it the stylist or is it like a mix and or, or it depends on the package? It definitely depends on the service for me. Yeah. So if I'm running management with a couple, um, that means that um, I will give them all the resources – to do their own planning and the yeah. backup and the support. So they'll have checklists and vendor recommendations to suit their style and their budget and they will go and um, do the work. And mm-hmm. there's a lot I can do to cut down the research hours that they're doing and make yeah. it a really quick, easy process. Yeah. Um, if it's a full service sort of job, then um, it's more collaborative and we'll have a meeting and I'll say, it's time we looked at cake now. These are some ideas that I've had that would fit into the design concept that we've looked at. Yeah, these are two bakeries we can go to and mm-hmm. taste cake, which is really fun, and put that design together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really good. Would you yeah. have anything to add to that? Chris? Well, I was going to say actually, one thing we didn't ask you was like, what are the differences between the services you offer? Like, and and what's kind of like your most popular package? Yeah, 
So management is by far the most popular with me, um, which is something I kind of came up with out of that idea of day of coordination that people know. I really didn't enjoy doing it because I didn't I didn't feel like I got to know the, the couple enough to be able to do justice um, to all the, the plans they, they'd made so carefully and, and put that together in a way that we were all happy with. Um, so I extended that out where from the time they book, they get monthly checklists and vendor recommendations and we have a big chat about exactly what their goal and their vision is. Mm. Um, and then we have phone meetings every couple of months so I can kind of coach them through and say, say you know, what are you having trouble with? What can I help you with at this point? Mm-hmm. And then when there's two or three months to go, then I come on board a bit more full service and start talking to their vendors and taking on those yeah. last minute things for them. Yeah, but it's good because it gives you a bit more, I shouldn't say the word control, but like <laughs> control over who they book because sometimes coming in late in the piece, mm. they've booked some suppliers that you know are going to not turn up on the day or not maybe yeah. deliver what they <laughs> promise. So does it? do you kind of start at the 12-month-ish mark with the management? Plan? I really like to. I like that 12 to 14, 15 month. Yeah. Point. I'll, my favourite time to come on is when they've booked their venue and their date um, and so I can be there from the beginning to help them go in the right direction. Yeah. If it's yeah. a vendor that, you know, I maybe are not so confident in and it's not too late, I will advocate for them, mm, yeah. the couple that way and say, look, maybe we want to think about a different direction but, mm-hmm. you know, part of the job is working with everyone and that's okay. Yeah. And sometimes when they've brought on someone I've never heard of before, I get to know someone really awesome that I want to work with again. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Yeah. So, Emma, in your opinion, who do you think needs a wedding planner? Like what types of couples? Would it be wrong to say everyone? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. So, of course, do you, you know want I have everyone to. to book you though? <laughs> well, I want all my people to book me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, look, mostly it is people that are either super busy in their daily lives and just can't add another thing. They realise how many hours it's going to cost them more. The fact that they won't be able to go out on weekends for the next year because they'll be tapping away on their computer researching photographers yeah. um, or people that have trouble conceiving the look or the vision mm. in their head. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I, I can always tell like people whose homes are really beautifully decorated or their outfits are really put together, they've got it. They know what their style is and, and mm-hmm. where to pull that from, but not everybody has that skill. Yeah. So, I think if it was me for like our wedding, I would just like – I just give you all of like my brain dump, and then yes, you could just that's pull the it other together. Thing. Like I'll ask to see people's yeah. Pinterest boards, and they've got all the things. And yeah, like, well, we're it's not cohesive. Rustic, boho, vintage, modern, contemporary, fifties yeah. <laughs> wedding. Or, yeah, how do we narrow that down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. can be so confusing when couples send me um, like other photographers' images and stuff. Um, or, or like a Pinterest board where they've got like bright and airy, and then mm. they've got like dark and moody, and then there's like just like such this contrast to the images <laughs> so I did have a couple recently though which like this is like the dream when you want to get this um they just sent me screenshots of my own Instagram of images that they loved oh, which was like yeah. the best thing ever I had one recently so where they brought me their styling inspo pictures and a couple of them were yeah. from weddings I'd done and they hadn't realized oh, I was that's, like, oh, oh, I know. that's, that's the best yeah. biggest yeah. compliment and then the mood yeah. board can have your own work on it I know. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Emma how early should couples book their wedding planner look at least 12 months and up to 18 is fine. I have my diary open for the next 18 months all the time. Um, Sometimes people want to book further out than that and that's okay. I just keep them in mind and let them know when the diary is open. It's ideal if they have their venue and their date secured um, because that gives us a lot to work with in terms of the season, the time of year and how things might look around the type of venue they've booked. If there's Vendors that they particularly have their heart set on, you should book them straight away. But generally, if it's more than a year out, I'll say let's do what I call the – it's not very inventive – the big five, which is like venue, photographer, videographer, celebrant and DJ or band, and then I can leave them alone to chill till there's 12 months to go. And So for most couples, what would be the most difficult or stressful thing um, in their planning process? Uh, the thing that most couples – tend to trip up on is when they get to that six to eight month mark and they need to be pulling in all their decor and hire items, especially if they're on a, what we call a dry hire venue where maybe you've just hired a barn or a paddock and have to bring in everything. Mm -hmm. It can be really difficult to wrap your head around every table, chair, cutlery, glass, sometimes toilets, 
kitchen equipment, all, yeah. all that kind of thing. That is often where people need more help. Um, it's also stressful if people don't make decisions in a timely manner and keep putting things off. That makes it stressful for us, but also for them at the end because yeah. at a time when they should be relaxing a little bit more and enjoying family that have maybe travelled in, it's just this awful mess of trying to play catch up in the last month or so, yeah. <laughs> which I really try to avoid. But yeah. um, it always seems it to happen. <laughs> People seem to be scared of making a decision in case they think they've made a mistake or they want yeah. to change things. I would rather change things later than yeah. I feel like that is decide. the most like yeah. the most difficult thing about wedding planning is having to make so many decisions. People get decision fatigue and they come to yeah. me and say, "I'm just over it. I can't do it anymore." Yeah. I'm like, "That's okay. Take a week or two off. Yeah, come back." No, that, that's good advice. <laughs> yeah, go, go on a date. Don't yeah. talk about the wedding if just you can. Chill. Yeah. yeah, bring the blood pressure down to a normal yeah. level, yeah. and then we'll talk again. <laughs> you know, I can quite often get to that point with people, and maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'm like, you know, we, we've got the big things sorted. Yeah. Guests care about great entertainment and great food, yeah. and yeah. the the truth is now, we, when we get to that two or three months out, and people are starting to get over it or get stressed, the truth is we could stop right now and do nothing else and you could still turn up on the day be married and have all your favorite people around you yeah and have that great night out and yeah it would be okay nobody's going to notice if you don't have personalized cookies on their plate yeah nobody walks away and goes that wedding would have been so much better if i had a candle in my hand right now <laughs> <laughs> where were the sparklers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people just get a little bit wound up in those expectations and and start to lose a little bit of perspective about Olive. <laughs> yes, Olive really wants to be married right now. Olive would make the cutest dog bride. <laughs> she just doesn't have anyone to marry, Kelly. Maybe she, is she Hank re- available? <laughs> he is actually, over. but he's a he's only one, so okay, oh, she'd be a real cradle yeah. snatcher. <laughs> she would be. <laughs> She's five. Does she like big dogs? <laughs> I like big dogs, and I cannot lie. <laughs> I think Dash is a much better partner. He's a similar size and energy level. Okay. So what's the biggest mistake couples make when they're planning their wedding? I feel like this is a good question. I feel like this is a whole podcast. I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah we need to do a whole episode on mistakes. Okay, so I don't know about the biggest, so that's a big call, but something I see really often is people book their venue and invest way too much of their budget in it and it's too late to change that. What do you mean then- by they invest way too much budget in the venue? Well, most people have a maximum they can spend. Yeah. And I always say don't put more than 20% of that money into your budget higher fee, into your venue higher fee, unless they include food and, and beverages as well, if they're all inclusive, and then you can maybe go to 40. But that's that's at the outside. That's at the max. Even then you're maybe going to have to compromise on some other areas. But if people have fallen in love with a venue and booked it without having made their budget out first – Ooh. then you're in a position where maybe you can't have all the, the things you want and there was yeah. something similar down the road for $5,000 less. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It that's is, very makes a lot of flowers and good food. Actually, yeah. speaking of percentages, what percentage do you normally suggest to couples to put into styling, decor, all that sort of stuff? That is my favourite part, so I want all the budget for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Often you get couples come and, and sort of say, like, you know, this is our styling budget and you think, Photos you've sent me, really. I know. It's going to cost you a lot more to than have that. some quite hard conversations that I like to have at the beginning to say, if you want this picture with no compromises, we need this much money, or with the money you have, we can have this. Are you happy with that? Um, the other mistake I see brides make is spending way out of their budget on their dress. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> and I get the emotional um, attachment to it, and a lot of yeah. women are not body confident or yeah. – I, I just think, like, I've got one at the moment who spent three times what her budget was on her gown. Oh, no. And now we have to have a conversation about, well, you're going to look great, but your flowers might not be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose it also depends on do they have someone helping them pay for that? Yeah, know? look, some people are really lucky and have help with that. A lot of mums or grandmas will help pay for their their daughter's gown. Um, but, yeah, budget is something I have a pretty real talk about pretty early on to try to yeah. avoid those yeah. kind of things because it's not it's so important. It's not about the the dress you're wearing. It feels like that in the moment, but I've never ever seen a bride where I went, "Oh, she doesn't look great." Like they're <laughs> they're happy and they're glowing because yeah. they've got yeah. all their favorite people around them and they're marrying yeah. their person. It's not about what you wear. Yeah, 
Actually, I have another question. Sorry. No, you go. But I feel like it's a good one to ask Emma. Um, Like what would you say is the average people are spending on their whole wedding? Like the people you're seeing come to you. Most of my budgets at the moment are around sixty to 80000 Yeah. Yeah, which I understand is an outrageous amount on one day. That's what I would say though and it's funny (laughs) because people often come to me and say, you know, our budget's this, is it realistic? And I'm like, well, I haven't seen what dress you want. You haven't shown me Mm. your inspo for your flowers or your reception. Like I haven't seen anything so it's really hard for me to say whether it's realistic or not. I try to base people's budgets on their guest count as well. So I know at a minimum to include all in like not just what guests experience on the day but your cars and your dress and your outfits and hair and makeup and everything else, you want a minimum of about $350 a head at yeah. the moment. So for 100 people, 35000 and that's a nice wedding that's not out there Pinterest that's perfect. Like baseline. But yeah. yeah, but gets you something nice where your guests will have a good feed and you'll have a nice day. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. That's like quite modest. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I would much rather that's have 450 Like, like that's yeah, a lot more fun yeah. and easier to get yeah. make people happy with. But the honest truth is the only way to cut your budget is to cut your guest list or be prepared to do a lot of DIY. And what you look at online about if you Google, you know, average wedding, it, it's often not accurate, like average wedding cost. It will no. say like $30,000 and you're like, <laughs> yeah, really? I don't think that's that yeah. accurate. I like, see the one that gets me at the moment is Celebrant. They always say, oh, Celebrant, four or $500. I'm like, no, the Celebrants not. I know are charging 800 to to 1000 actually. Yeah. Some of them Easily. are 2000 Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is your best piece of advice for couples planning a wedding? Okay, so two things. From the start, before you book anything, make a budget out. Mm-hmm, so important. Yeah. Um, know what your maximum is that you want to spend and if you can, do a little bit of research around what your favourite, most important things will cost so that you know you have a realistic budget put together. Um, decide which elements are the most important to you so that you'll be okay to compromise on other things like maybe – You want a really gorgeous cake from your favourite cake maker, which you know is going to cost a few dollars, but you don't really care so much about cars, something like that. Uh, And then I guess just to um, protect your relationship and from a mental wellness point of view, try to spend some time together without talking about the wedding where you don't have to make decisions. It's just something fun that you guys love doing together. I always try to encourage my couples every couple of months, have you been out lately and done something fun? Yeah. You know, just to – it can be easy to lose perspective about everything else that's yeah. going on. Yeah. We're so focused on this event. Yeah, I think your friends would get a bit exhausted just only hearing about the wedding. Yeah, yeah. and they're probably too nice to say anything about yeah, it, but they really want course. their old friends back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But also I think that couples are like when you said about going out and stuff, they're probably more so cutting back on those things because mm. they want to have more money to spend yeah. on their wedding. Um, so – but there are lots of things you can do together that don't cost yeah, a lot. Absolutely. Right? Go, Go to the missing park. One piece of advice, though. What's that? Hire a wedding planner. Oh my God, that's so obvious. <laughs> Naturally, and not just any planner. Hire me. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about um, timelines and timing and kind of what you do and with like putting little buffers in and stuff. Mm. Because I know as a photographer that. Uh, I'm a bit of a timekeeper on the day yeah. and I know how much time I have for things and sometimes I have to work a lot faster and try to rush people without it making them feel rushed yeah. to try and gain some more time after losing some time when things don't go right because sometimes things just happen. Yeah, just and don't. Yeah. yeah <laughs> they just don't go to time. Yeah. Okay. So where I start when I'm putting a run sheet together is two places is knowing that most guests have about eight hours in them before they get tired and want to go home. Mm -hmm. So I sort of count back that eight hours from the end of the night to find out when the ceremony might start. That's really good. Mm. Oh, thank you. Just, you know, just pitch that up on the way. (laughs) But the other thing to consider, which you would love, Dana, is your sunset photos. Yes. Very important. (laughs) Photographers have generally told me that the best light of the day is about 45 minutes before the official sunset time, Mm -hmm. depending on the location and time of year. Um, so we factor in when that's likely to land as well and make sure it's not in the middle of the ceremony or mm. right when dinner's supposed to be served. Yeah. And, and it always ends up being there. when dinner needs to I be know. served. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh. I quite often, can you just get that meal out to the bride and groom and then they'll buzz off for 20 minutes when nobody's, yeah. nobody's going to notice. After I've got those two details now done is to talk to the photographer first mm-hmm. about what yeah. time is do they need to – We appreciate to that. Finish. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <sighs> 
well, often you guys have already got a, a list of yeah. family shots and know how much time you need for that. So once we have a ceremony time nailed, I know that's going to be about 30 or 45 minutes. Mm. We want family photos straight away because the celebrant can make an announcement to family, please don't run off and get a drink straight away. We need you. I know that you guys are going to want about an hour and a half after that with the wedding party and the yeah. newlyweds. The morning can be a little bit tricky because there's different yeah. things happening in different places. Yeah. You want to allow time for your photographer and videographer to travel between those places as yeah. well. Um, yeah. <laughs> some people it's don't never remember considered. that. <laughs> that <laughs> and I also know that the photographer is probably um, going to want to leave the girls getting ready about half an hour before the girls actually leave so yeah. that they can get to the ceremony and take some shots of the setup and guests yeah. and things like that before yeah. the wedding party arrives. Um, so I guess talk to those vendors first that are going to be there for a big chunk of the day and find out what they need and help other vendors um, yeah. fill in around that. Yeah. When I'm not working with a planner on a wedding, um, I send – well, I do it anyway. I send my couples a timeline and it has a bit of an explanation of how much time they need for each part of the day, like – half an hour for ceremony, then 15 minutes for congratulations and then they have half an hour for family portraits and then there's like, you know, five or ten minute buffers in between everything just in case something goes wrong um, or the bride comes late or or the grooms, whatever. Um, But um, I think, yeah, that couples often don't think about the earlier um, in the day, like the prep um, with – travel time so like having accommodation closer together and closer to the venue will it maximizes yeah. the value you get yeah, from your photographer's exactly. time yeah so you're not paying me to drive 45 minutes from you know um one location to the other location so absolutely yeah because think- sometimes they're thinking you know well i'll save money by getting ready at mum's house yeah. which might be an hour away mm-hmm. but they're not really going to get the value out of the photographer. Well, they have to yeah. pay. They have to pay an extra hour or two to the photographer yeah, anyway yeah, yeah. to to make to get it happen. the photos. Yeah, that they want. Yeah, I yeah. think something to mention as well is that timelines look really rigid. Like mine are about twelve pages yeah. long because it has to accommodate oh, everyone. Yeah. And particularly once the reception starts, there's got to be a little bit of flex in that. Like I always say to people, you know, things happen like you say, and we've got to have a goal and a plan, but we're going to be flexible around it too. So if it's taking a bit longer to get the meal out, we'll push things back 10 minutes. Or, you know, if the couple is having a really great conversation with relatives that they haven't seen for a year, I'm not going to be tapping my watch going, well, you were supposed to cut that cake five minutes yeah. ago. Like, yeah, we'll roll with whatever's you have to happening. Yeah. Heard on the day, don't you? Yeah. 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 Some things can be like, yeah. you know, moved around, especially when it comes to reception. Food service so, is sort of fairly yeah. rigid yeah, and making sure you get the photos you want at the right time. Yeah. But most other things, I'm just going to roll with whatever happens yeah. and make it work. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't is, feel like you always have to do every traditional thing. No, you know? that's right. Get rid God, of no. Like if you don't want to do a first mm-hmm. dance, if you don't want to cut the cake, if yeah. you don't even want a cake. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't, we don't amazing, always but. have cakes. We quite often have dessert <laughs> tables. But also if the – you know, if everyone's eaten and the guests are gagging to get on the dance floor, I'm not going to wait, make them wait another hour because that's what it says on the timeline, like, go have fun. Yeah, exactly. You are not allowed to dance now. Get yeah. off the dance floor. <laughs> We've got two minutes to go, people. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you don't want to be the fun police, that's for sure, not on a yeah. wedding day. No. Um, so what's your favourite moment at a wedding day? Um, so sappy. <laughs> <laughs> when the couple sees each other for the first time, whether it's first look or when they hit the aisle, like you just see their faces change and light up and realise what they're about to commit to and how happy they are about yeah. that. I don't subscribe at all to this thought that marriage is just a piece of paper. You see it on people's faces that this means something and they're tied yeah. together and they're really pleased about it and really yeah. happy that they've found their person. Um, but I also like the really fun bit at the end of the night when the dance floor opens. I don't always get to see that because yeah. I've already had a 12-hour yeah. day and I need to get home. But, you know, if you've got a really fun couple and you can get involved in that party end of the night, like that's the reward for all the hard work. Yeah. yeah. So, Emma, yes. tell us um, <laughs> maybe an embarrassing story for a wedding. It might not be like – where you were involved as such, where you were the embarrassment. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, yeah. Something tell, funny you've yeah. witnessed or embarrassing. Yeah. There's, or... there's so many stories where I've been the embarrassment. <laughs> and that's all I, I feel it's like. always me, yeah. That's all I feel like I can speak to. I don't want to put anyone else in that, in that <laughs> drink. Um, I have had things, well, I've had doggos poop when they shouldn't <laughs> in the middle of the aisle. 
You've what? Had what? Did you say poop in the middle of the aisle? Yeah. yeah. Dogs. I, a, a dog was being led oh, down okay. the aisle. <laughs> I thought she said a guest. Oh, yeah, like, oh my God. A baby in a toddler? Yeah, or like That's not my wedding. Boy yeah. or? I was thinking an adult. But a, a, dog like, was being, this a dog was being walked up the aisle and he needed yeah. a, a poop break. And oh, so he just had one. Oh, yeah. And then I felt I had to go in and quickly scoop it up and get it out of the way. <laughs> that is people. hilarious. Wow. Um, oh. Emma? <laughs> you sound like you need a favour. Yeah, you start every question Emma. with Emma. Yeah, Emma. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> Uh, do anything for you, Dana. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I said it that way because it's a bit cheeky. Okay. Um, I would love to know your first celebrity crush, who that was. Mm. Was it a cartoon? No, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't a cartoon. I'm trying to think back. I know who I crushed on all through my teenage years was Donnie Wahlberg from New Kids on the Block. And I still get oh, to see him on which Blue Bloods. The cute one, Kelly. The blonde one. <laughs> the, blonde the, blonde, one? the blonde tough guy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That started when I was 14 and continues yeah. today. Could we maybe put like a photo up of him on the screen? Sure. Like this, we'll do that. Yeah. Preferably maybe we with should the shirt put off. like um, a photo of you and him in a heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually sure. I loved um, Nick Lachey from Backstreet yeah. Boys. Mm. No, they were a bit after he my time. Look great now, though. No, I loved him on the Nick and well. Jessica show when he was married to Jessica um, Simpson. They did a reality oh, show about I their marriage. I forgot that he was with her. Yes, and then they broke up, and it was all really awkward. But the show was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, you can, it was on MTV. Because now he's got a show with his new wife. Oh, that's um, awkward. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Love Blind. Have you not seen Love Has Blind? Has he really? Yeah. No, and it, he's oh, got that's as like a game show, isn't it? On him, <laughs> yeah. Show. It's it's like maths. Okay, yeah, but Jessica yeah. and Nick was just a reality show about their life. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That would be interesting. Now I want to watch it. It was very cute and funny. I wonder why it didn't take off like the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think it had three or four seasons, but then they broke up, so, you know. Oh, that's always awkward. Yeah. Maybe That'll they planned the that. Maybe it was like all part of the production. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so it was the guy from? Donnie Wahlberg. Look Little it up. Donnie. All right. Okay. But don't look too carefully. I don't want to share it. <laughs> Last question for you. What makes you the happiest? Oh, <laughs> simple things like everyone else, my fam and staying home and yeah, um, cozying up with my hubby and kids and our dog. Oh, yeah. your dog's so cute. He really is. He's the cutest one in the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what do I, what makes me happy about work? Just, just in general. Yeah, in just, general. Yeah, yeah, I just, um, you know, like some girlfriends suggested a night away recently. Actually, it was our group, Kel. It was. Yeah. Our um, and wedding was planners like, and stylists. And, and yeah. we, we were like, it's a tax deduction if we go away. Yeah. It's a planning like <laughs> And I weekend. was like thinking to myself, I'm up for dinner, but I don't want to go away from my family for that long. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. And sometimes yeah. it's hard going away f- for a night with people that are your friends, but they're not like your bestest friends like family oh no I'm sure you guys will be fun I'm sure I'm it would just, be fun but yeah. yeah oh look it ties into my you want anxiety your own bed as well don't you? yeah like, I don't want anyone to hear me snore or like a sleepover <laughs> an adult sleepover can be anxiety inducing <laughs> I spend a lot of time overthinking things far more than I should it would probably be fine yeah. but we my, could just do a day winery thing you know, oh yeah I could do like that daytime that'd be fun but I said I like after I've had the you baby down the rabbit hole wines. Yeah, I love it. I've been there. But do it yeah. on a weekday because they do like the most amazing food, which they don't do on the weekend. It's still good on the weekend, but it's oh. just not as good. Do they only do f- the food, the proper like? Yeah, because it's too busy on the weekends because everyone's there. So yeah, it. and that would yeah. suit us all. We should do a um, yeah. Wait until I've had the baby and I can have a few wines. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not so much fun otherwise. <laughs> I'd like to come too. No, yeah, no, <laughs> no and, and Dana can be the only <laughs> photographer coming invited. <laughs> No, it's okay. You can go without me. It's fine. <laughs> of course, the other thing that makes me happy is watching Blue Bloods. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I need to investigate this show. Yeah. Do you know what? I think my family is so busy. Like my husband works about 60 hours a week and I work really hard and my kids are teens and, and doing their thing. There's really only Sundays where we can all spend some time together and I don't want to miss that. Did you so. always want to spend time at home when your kids were like at that you know that toddler age when they're just like yeah, exhausted? Yeah, I think I did. There was definitely times. <laughs> there was a lot of times where I was done. But because uh-huh. um, I'm, I'm often like, I cannot wait to get out I of here still, and get my nails done or do something. I still don't like being away from them for too long. Just no, same. I love them. 
Yeah. I, I, I haven't really had a night away. As they've got older and they've had like school camps that are five or six nights, I'm like, don't leave me for so long. And they're like, mum, stop it. <laughs> Oh, it must be hard as they get older. Yeah, I'm just really pleased they still like hanging with us sometimes. So yeah. I just want to hold on to that. How old your oldest? Yeah, nice. 18. Oh, wow. That's nice that he still wants to hang. Yeah. I mean, he does his own thing as well. That gives but... me hope that, you know, because yeah. I, I heard Aww. that when boys get to like 13, they're like, oh, go away, mum. There was definitely a time when it changed from him always wanting to be with me to going more with his dad needed boy company yeah and that was a bit hard but heartbreaking I've yeah. heard having having sons it's like um going through the slowest most heartbreaking breakup oh, of your no, life I don't th- no he's still really sweet they slowly like you know they they, they move out he's and still, they, they leave and they don't they don't he still know. does things like a couple of days ago we were out somewhere and we were crossing the street and I didn't see a car coming and he grabbed me and yanked me back. Oh, like, what a hero. Yeah, you know, like he's just looking out for me. and Yeah, that's yeah. really sweet. Yeah. Also look both ways. <laughs> uh, well, I'm talking. I can't look both ways as well. <laughs> <laughs> so where can um, our couples find you? Oh, it's really easy. So Instagram and Facebook are both just tagged as Sparrow Weddings. So it's S-P-A-R-R-O-W Weddings. And website is just sparrowweddings.com.au. It's got all our pricing and package details on there. Awesome. And I've loved working with you as well on some weddings. I love both of you yeah. guys. It makes our day so much more yeah. fun when we've yeah. got a great team together. <laughs> just haven't worked with you enough. Like, need some more weddings. So, couples? Yeah. yeah. The hint. We're a Book great Emma. team. Put us together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always good. I'm always, like, less stressed when I have you because I know that you're going to have, like, enough time for things on the timeline. Oh, thank yeah. you. So Emma, thank you so much for being here today and coming on our podcast. We have loved having you. Oh, I've loved being here. It's been awesome. Thank yeah, you. It has been so good. I feel a little bit honoured that you asked me. Oh, of <laughs> course.